at y'all. So today we are gonna do a cutout. Woo! We're gonna cut a hive out of this five frame Langstroth box and into this Waray slash comfort style box. So the first thing that we do is we take the hive that we're gonna cut out, we take it away from its stand and we put it um, off to the side, hopefully in a shady spot so we can work the combs more easily and we turn it upside down. So this is upside down. It's away from the returning forager bees. Um, and now we are going to pop the bottom, which is on top right now. And we're gonna place an empty five frame box on top. Uh, a couple things to add. We placed an eight frame back where the foragers are going back to where this box was. Another thing to mention is that um, this is a lot easier with older, with you know, swarms of, that have been caught for a while because the comb is older, meaning that it's certainly a bit more hardy. It's going to be easier to work with in theory. Absolutely. So hopefully that's true. Um, yeah. Oh, and also we screw down both the lids and in this case we screwed down the bottom. So you have to unscrew, you know, quite a bit. Um, but that's all been done. So we'll be able to get right in there now. So the first thing I'm going to do is pop the bottom off. All right, so this cutout's a huge mess. Sure is. Uh, so that bottom board that you, before you set it off to the side, you wanna make sure the queen's not on there. And then we're gonna place this five frame onto our box that's got all our comb in it. And, and I'm gonna, gonna double check that there's no queen on here. She's usually pretty quick to move down away from disturbances, but that's not always true. So for us, in order to get the bees out of the way and do the least damage to the bees, what we like to do is um, shake bees into a package. So if bee feels like there's no queen on that bottom board, I'll take it and shake it into this package. Ow. If you're going to shake bees into a package, mm -hmm. make sure it stays in the shade mm -hmm. after you do so. Mm -hmm. Always. All right. So our next task to do is to smoke the bees from this bottom box up into this box. And what we want to happen is that the queen um, and the bee is going to run up into this box and the bees are going to follow. That's going to make it easier for us to find and locate the queen and shake bees into our package box so that we can um, we can work the combs, which as V said are pretty messy. So another thing to mention is that um, I'm gonna use this as a wedge under the, what is what was originally the lid, but is now the bottom. Um, the, the reason that that works is because you're letting some light in. I mean, the multiple reasons, it allows you room to be able to smoke. And also you're allowing some light in and the queen is gonna run away from the light to the darkness. So um, when I smoke that, she's going to come up to the top, this top area, because it's going to be substantially darker than what is down below. And you can't really see this happening, but I'm lifting 
the box and I'm going to wedge this. You can really use anything, but we're just using a uh, like a little top bar, homemade top bar actually. Um, all right, here we go. So after we smoke, we're going to leave it for, I don't know, maybe five minutes or so and let them run. They take a while. We've been guilty of trying to check too soon and they haven't run all the way and once you disturb that it's kind of problematic because you're opening light up up here and you really don't want to do that. Also I think somewhere along the way Sam Comfort mentioned to me that this this smoke when you smoke should be really thick and really heavy it's not you know it's not like you just lit your smoker you, you've got a good heavy smoke that is uh, you know gonna make a move so you might be able to see they're already starting to run up away from the smoke so that's cool Alright, so next B is going to flip our top box so we can look for the queen. And it's been at least five minutes, I'd say. So as you can see, a lot of bees have run up here and we flipped the box over so now they're separating and we're keeping our eyes peeled for a queen. She could be there, she could be on the side wall. Generally you want to watch where the bees are running towards. That's a good indicator of where she might be. Look for the largest clumps of bees. He's doing now using a blunt edge tool. We are gonna move the bees out of the way and search for the queen. Cutouts are a lot of work, but they are a great way to get free bees. Also, you'll quickly become a lot more comfortable working with bees. That's true. Like, out of necessity. And so as Ange lifts those bees up, I'm trying to keep my eyes peeled underneath. Because what usually happens is she will run away from that disturbance. And I'm moving very slowly here, just letting the bees crawl over me. They're all festooning off of each other as you can see. And queens like to run in these channels to stay safe when there's been a disturbance this big. So we're really trying to move the bees out of the way. So we can 
find the queen underneath all of them. Probably darting. Oh, there she is. She's on the hand. Oh, I see. She's little. All right, we found her. Here's a cage. Thank you. All right, so B is going to put that queen into a cage. And we're doing that to keep the queen from flying away. Um, a lot of times when you do a cutout, and leave the queen uncaged, uh, the bees will can abscond. And so we like to just put her in a cage with some candy um, and give the bees a couple days to chew the cage, uh, release the queen, um, and give us the opportunity to let them establish in that new location after a pretty big disturbance. Okay, so now what we have from shaking all those bees, um, is a package of bees, right? This is probably a couple pounds of bees. Um, we have a queen in a cage in here. We've got a cap on the cage. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna focus our attention on cutting out the comb and banding it in. And then we will come back to this box um, to relocate the bees and the queen. Okay, so at this point we have um, started cutting out actual comb from the box and we are banding it onto sticks to turn into frames. Top bars. Yeah. There's not a ton of sal salvageable comb in this hive. Um, it mm -hmm. looks like some of the hive, the wax uh, collapsed. Um, yeah, so we moved this in transit and it was a really big hive, so we're thinking that it was quite hot and even though we left it well ventilated, um, some of the comb collapsed from the vibration and the heat. So we are salvaging what we can, um, but we, it looks like we are going to have to sacrifice quite a bit to the wax pot because it is not going to be salvageable. And the way that we band these in... So we use um, zip ties to band onto our bamboo skewer, which you can see here that I am wiggling. And you can watch B actually do one live. You want to go low on the brood comb and band it onto the top bar so that it doesn't just, uh, especially with this newer wax that B is banding, it doesn't just collapse. Um, and then the comb falls right off the bar. Right, so when I go to tighten it, if I'm too high up, I'm gonna literally just pull right out of that comb. It's right. just gonna turn to nothing. We've had it happen many times. And then you wanna clip off your ends. That gives you room to work with. And what will happen here is that the bees will then work this comb and attach it to the bar and you can come in, cut these off completely in a couple days. 